So a couple of years ago, I was watching YouTube and I saw Robin and I posted a comment and I said, I'm 73, am I too old to do this? And she posted back and said, no, come on out. And then you did it. And then I did it. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Robin with Creativity RV. And this is my new friend, Terry. Wanna say hi? Hi. And we're out here in the desert at a long-term visitor area where we actually met last year. I was driving by and Terry waved at me and told me that she left that comment last year. And here I am. And here she is. On I'm, the road. I'm so glad that worked out. Yes, okay, yeah. I am too. Tell us what attracted you to the idea and then tell us why you discovered that you're not actually a nomad. I was trying to sell a restaurant for quite a while, and I knew that I was getting older, and I needed one more adventure in my life. I started watching YouTube, and I started seeing the, the nomads like Bob Wells roaming around the desert, and I had always heard of it because I've kind of been military and civil service all my life, and I thought, hmm, maybe that's something I can do. I can become a nomad. So, I sold my restaurant. Within two weeks and two days, I was down here. And then I parked and I said to myself, I am not a nomad. No way, no shape, no how. Nope. I can come. I can sit myself here for all winter, be happy, enjoy myself. But then I'm going back home to Montana. What didn't you like about it? I cannot, I don't think I could stand packing up every two weeks to go to a new, a new campground, a new BLM, a new forest service or whatever. It's too much for me practically to go into town and get water and propane and gas and <laughs> laundry and buy food and all that stuff. I'm pooped by the time yeah, I get home. Yeah, it can home. be a lot. I think this is really important because when people see this life, they can think that it's all or nothing. Yes. And I've been saying forever, camp like you, if that means you do it part time, if you stay out here all the time, if you're in a van or a bus or an RV, whatever, you want to go to an RV park, it's fine. I think some people feel like they're like faking it if they don't do it all the time. It was 14 below up in Montana last week, and it was 70 degrees down here and sunny. <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, it's like, nah. What, yeah. did your, uh, what did your friends and family say when you told them you wanted to come out here? My granddaughter said, oh, Grandma, couldn't you wait for another couple of years so you can help take care of my two little kids? And I said, no, I'm getting too old. I have to do it now. i got to have my adventures now while I can, or I'm going to be sitting in the nursing home, and then you can come visit me with your kids. Can we come in for a tour? Yes, you may. Just All right. Let's do it. In the house. Oh, All right. Boy. Come on. <laughs> All right. I'm coming. Okay, Terry, what you driving? I'm driving a 2006 Winnebago Aspect. And how did you find it? It was sitting on a lot in my hometown of Kalispell, Montana, and I thought it looked so pretty, but it was too expensive, of course. Mm -hmm. I finally just... After we sold the restaurant, I just said, I got to get away from here. What do you think of it? Are you happy with the rig? I am. You know, I've been looking at trailers and stuff like that and fifth wheels since I saw yours. Uh -huh. And it's like, this one's got everything I want. It is just perfect for me. So the first thing is my wonderful table that I got just today. And the tabletop was built by my brother last year. And the lagoon table leg was just put on today by another RVer out here. I love it the way it is. It makes it so you can swivel it around. I can use the back part like a couch and relax and put my feet up if I want. Oh, that's nice. So refrigerator and freezer and it's a dual electric or gas. I nice. wouldn't go with all electric myself. I would only go with propane. Now tell them why. Because you need too much electric, and I, I do not enjoy that much being in a park plugged in with a whole bunch of people around me. Right. Then I have this nifty storage. That is nice. Isn't that nice? And that came with the rig. That came with the rig. And for storage, uh, that's one reason I like this rig. It's got so much storage. Underneath all the seats...
more storage. That's great. This is the storage over the cab. So what did you do up here? So uh, when they put the solar panels on top, he put my charge controller in this one. This used to be one of those old, remember the old TVs in yeah. 2006? Yeah. That were this long? Well, there we go. I got storage up here. My sister-in-law made me my favorite colors over here. Field glasses so I can look at birds. Uh -huh. A few books and stuff like that. You still have room in your cabinets. Yes. Don't collect too much crap. That's right. Tell me about the shoe storage here. That's actually a storage for the shower. That's why it's so small. When you get the shoe storage, they're like four across or uh -huh. something. And I didn't want one that big. I only wanted it to be small because I don't bring a lot of shoes. And this is the kitchen. And this is a flip-up extension for the counter. I, I like the sink. I am a little disappointed in the stove. I wish I had an oven. Um, I, my sister is going to buy me one this summer. What about this microwave? Uh, I have to tell you the truth. I hate the son of a bitch. It, I burnt up some blueberry muffins like you would not believe the other day. <laughs> you really have to keep track of it because it's convection and it blows. You only have to cook something like 10 minutes or it's going to burn it. Okay, Finn. You ready to show us the bedroom? This is one of the things that I find difficult with this rig, is the bed being in the corner. It's difficult to make your bed and make it look decent. Yep. It is very difficult. I was watching Robin's videos, <laughs> and she said, how to build shelves in a closet oh, without drilling into the walls. You didn't. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, okay. The, here we go. There we go. Oh, you did great. There's toaster. There's... The printer's back here. See the printer's way back under there. Very nice. And then command strips again for the knife block and the... Oh, kitchen stuff. Kitchen stuff. That's great. Yes. Wow. Well, I'm glad that helped somebody. <laughs> That's great. I don't use the shower. I go and I can't stand a shower that's, that's a navy shower that's just a little... Right. I'd rather have a shower. So I... I wash up in my little wash tub every morning, and then every week, week and a half, I go into town and I go to a city park, and I've bought a yearly pass, uh -huh. and I can take showers there. Genius. So I've got 270 watts solar panels on top. I have two lead acid six volt batteries that are mounted under the floorboard and I need to check the water on those. Okay, so if I want to run any of the 120 volt outlets that are in this rig, I have to turn on the generator and that powers up the 30 amp inverter that is installed in the rig. And if I went to a bigger inverter, it would cost 1500 bucks, yep. something like that. Yep. And I've just gotten this jackery <laughs> that does all the stuff that I need to have done. I only run the generator now if I want to run the microwave convection oven. You don't have to run your generator as much because you have a portable power box with an inverter inside of it. Yes. That you can plug your stuff into. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Thanks, Terry, for the great interview and tour. You're so welcome. It's never too late to have an adventure. Go out there and do what you want to do. That's right. Don't let anybody hold you back. That's right. Yes. All right. Until we see you next time, everybody out there, have happy travels and be free. Bye. Bye. Bye.